this is Nancy with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy and bringing you a painting on fabric video. This is creative painting on fabric using a gel press plate and the plates I'm using are 8x10. I use two of them and I use Dilutions acrylic paint because they're a very fluid paint. All of the products I use are um, available at joggles.com and you'll see the link below. So this time I want to talk to you about working with a resist. So I wanted to come up with a way that I could make a plaid monoprinted fabric. It's like, really? Could I do that? Well, I came up with it. And there I was going, all right, that washi tape just was never going to come off the roll. So, but I did find another one. So this is washi tape. Um, it has a design on it because in paper crafting world, this is a big deal. You can get washi tape with every, so many different designs. Well, what it really is, is a low tack masking tape. Now, there wasn't any that were really thin, so on the left plate, you see the black lines. That tape I got off of Amazon, it's called white board tape, and it worked pretty darn good. It was able to stay down and gave me the effect I wanted with the thin line. So here you see I've got my little grid made for my plaid, and I've put down some paints. Now, when I originally did this, I thought I would put the paint down, peel up the tape, and then get my print. I was shocked to find out that voila, the tape sucks up some of the paint. So I did not have to take the tape off every time. I do, and you'll see when I do that. Um, but the, I was really surprised by that. But I always want more. I want more color. I want more variation. So that's when I pulled out my Posca pens, and those are available at Joggles. These are acrylic paint pens and you can mark it on fabric and guess what acrylic paint means permanent on fabric and it really there's so much you can do with Posca paints so here I'm going to do it again but what I've noticed is usually the second time I do the print for the plaid the masking tape does not hold as much so that you'll see that print when I pull it off on the left I've already done two or three so now it's time to take off the washi tape and the whiteboard tape and I'm going to put that down on that blue and I get a very bold, probably because I had a little bit too much paint on there, um, print. So you can see where I've added those lines. I've got some metallic Posca paints and it sparkles, it shines, that means that I love it. So on the left, yeah, I don't get as much of an impression with the plaid as I did on the other, but look at this one lot of purple but this next one on the left ends up being one of my favorites I let that ghost print dry on the plate and then I put down another light color and try not to bray her too much when you do this and put down the fabric and let it set there for a while so that it'll clean up your plate but in this case it really ended up being a nice print it pulled up um, a lot of really good the purple from below and the pink so now I'm using the last pull on this one, and that's I'm using the Dilution Shimmer. You can see how shiny it is. Pulling up the tape, and then I'll get again a really crisp, bold plaid print that I do then add a little bit of Posca paint to. I think I, I think I do. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, let's let's both be surprised when we see it. Or maybe this is the one I'm thinking of, because this one I try to use my red Posca paint pen my bold tip and I think I've just used it too much because it's like hardly a mark at all and that used to be a very very bold mark but I use this red one quite a bit and just adding more lines to it because plaids usually not always but usually are going to be more than two colors so by adding it with the Posca pen I get more of a plaid ish look. Now I really like this look where I've got the dark purple and then I use a dark purple pen and so now it really looks like it's weaving in and out. So now that I know that I'll probably do that more. I never occurred to me that that's what it was looking like and I love that. So now I'm pulling the one up on the left and look at that. Voila. I love that. I think and I love how clean my plates get after I leave it on. So the second resist I'm going to do is thread and cord. Now I must warn you ahead of time. The first print that I pull from this, 
the yuck, not happy with it, not pretty, but the second one turned out really cool. So I'm just taking some thread and I'm using my yucky thread, putting that down and then going to kind of swirl some cord. And this is a very fine weight cord. Can't be, it's got to be less than an eighth of an inch. And I picked this up and it's like mud. Yeah, don't like that one. But this one beneath it, onto that green, I, that one I think turned out really cool. I like this next print. So the, I think the, when I do it with the next yarn, I get the same idea. The first one, I don't love. The second ghost print, I really like. So it's, you know, going, I don't know what it's called, but you, you got to go through the yucky to get to the pretty. Does that make any sense? No, probably not. <laughs> All right, so putting down, and this time I'm going to use kind of, this is the, oh, this is the ends of the thread when I tear my white fabric into the sizes of squares I use. You always get those little white, the little threads left, and I use that. I wished I'd had a piece of cheesecloth. Truth is, I have cheesecloth, I just don't know where it's at. So look at that. Didn't that turn out cool? That's the ghost print from the cord and the thread. So on the right, kind of same thing. Don't really care for that print. But I do like this next print, and I'm going to do the layering technique. That's where it's going to dry on the plate. Then I'm going to put a new paint down, and I can't remember. I think this one maybe I didn't let it dry quite enough, but I do like this second ghost print from the string. And like I was saying, I wished I'd use cheesecloth. Maybe then I could cover the entire plate and just distort a part of it. So you'll probably see at some point in time I'm going to try that when I find my cheesecloth. So this one, see, now I like it when it's got, especially because it's that shiny purple. So here I've decided to try a resist technique using an eyelash yarn. So I tried to really fluff up, fluff up the eyelashes first. I wanted to get them as fluffed out as possible, I guess. So that's why I'm pulling on that thread or yarn, trying to get it to, you know, fluff those little eyelashes out. And I'll put this down. And this one, I like the first one. I really like the second one. And that's not always the case with me. I mean, I know people that oftentimes like the ghost print better than the original print. That one was, I did like that one, but this one I just didn't care for as much. It's okay. Maybe it's because it's too dark. I don't know. But I'm going to let that one on the left dry a little bit before I pull it up. And I like that one with the cream. And that was another ghost print pull with cream on it. Here we go. I think this is the last one in the yarn and then we're going to go on. So here I'm trying to don't brayer too much. Brayer minimally. Just get that paint across it so that you don't activate the bottom piece and have it all smeared. But I love the subtleness of that piece. That one's okay. I guess subtle is what I was looking for on this day. So here it's not so much as a resist as it's using odd little things to add to. So sometimes a stamp is too much, a stencil is too much. So on this dark one, couldn't do too much with it except black or white. So I'm using the white here and I'm using the reverse side of a dauber cap. It gives me a ring that's, I don't know, maybe five eighths of an inch. I love it. I love putting little rings on things. It just looks cool. And this is that black piece I pulled on the last video that I did. And I was like, yeah, what am I going to do with this solid black? I'm going to add white rings to it. It kind of looks like a little universe. I'll add a little bit more to that as we go here. So a dauber has a sponge on one side and then, then just the reverse side um, to make the little rings. So anything can do that. You can use... Um, a bottle cap, any kind of cap at all. So this paintbrush is a paintbrush that is made to make these textured lines, but you could just take a paintbrush and cut little groovies into it. You see what it looks like there on the right? So little, so it just does, I should have maybe done a little bit more dry brush because uh, I, like, I like it a little better on this one where it's a little bit subtler. And now I'm going to use a sponge um, and using a sea sponge, and it worked pretty good on this one. I do love all the layers on this, the blue and the purple in the base, then the white rings, the yellow, um, and then I do a little here, but there's a flower one that I do that I, yeah, this is it. Yeah, the blops are too bloppy. So after a while, I quit dipping it in on the right, and I just do sponge, 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 
all over it and then I like it better. So now it's kind of got some pink and purple in the flowers. Not my favorite print, um, but it'll be okay. So that's one that I printed last time and now I'm going to use that grid. It's a black grid that actually, it's a, it's a um, gutter cover. That's what it is, a gutter cover. And it just leaves really cool little subtle lines on a piece that otherwise I'd be like, yeah, that piece is okay. But when it gets the little lines on it, gets more layers going on to it, then I think it makes all the difference. So here, gonna add little lines even to some of my favorite ones with the writing on it. Little circles, lines, anything to add just a little bit more texture and interest to the piece. And you see that a lot in the commercially printed fabrics too because most of those are something that somebody has painted and then they create the fabric out of it. Well, you're just creating your own. So this is what we have. So we've got the plaid ones, quite a few different plaid ones. I should do a whole quilt with just the plaid. Okay, that's a great idea. Then here's the two, some that I liked, some that I didn't, and then this one with the um, thing from last time. So those were resists, and then I also threw in a little bit of there like using just home pieces that you may have around the house. You know that you have things around your house that create, can create texture, so get creative and try and see what you can do. And with some of those, it's just the idea of adding just a little bit of something to the top of it to make that print just bump it up a little bit and be a little bit more interesting. I hope you like this. Please give us a thumbs up. All the um, supplies that I use are available at joggles.com. Please use the link below. Um, and then I do get a small commission when you do that, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.